Hi cuties, my name is Hanako Kozumi and this is the channel Nerdy Nekoma. Everything here is about Haiku Jet stories and fanfic. Thanks for joining us today. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and leaving a like. Welcome to today's video. As I mentioned before, I planned on doing a Kodokan Angst video and this is it. Um, it's really angsty, so like, warning for major character death and if you don't want to watch it, that's completely fine. Other than that, let's jump straight into it. Kuro, I'm home. His words echoed through the empty hallway, followed by silence as the blonde walked through the door of their shared apartment. He almost forgot to take off his shoes. Kema remembered in time before the other would notice and quickly put them aside. The silence was interrupted by footsteps deriving from the kitchen. He didn't pay them much attention, even though he could feel Kuro staring at him. I know I'm late. Classes took longer than expected. He was exhausted just thinking about today's lectures. They were too time consuming. The classes were too boring and the contact with other students was way too tiring. He hated how they stared at him. As if they pitied him. As if he was broken. All the boy wanted to do at this point was to fall down on his bed and sleep. Maybe play a game or two beforehand. A small part of him considered or rather dreamed about just cuddling with his roommate, but that would just distract him and he would lose. Kenma wasn't in the mood to deal with the frustration right now. Maybe they could cuddle later for a bit. A warm feeling spread throughout his chest, thinking about it. For now, however, he walked straight past Kodo and the kitchen without another word. It earned him a disapproving frown from the other. He knew, just like Kemma, that the blonde hadn't really eaten all day. Just a few minutes later, the small body painted a dark silhouette against the bluish light of the monitors in front of him. His fingers flew at a record speed over the keyboard, causing a flash of colors and lights all over the screens. The cat-like eyes were fixated on the rapidly changing shapes in front of him and he instantly analyzed the information coded in color and noise. Outside in the real world, these kinds of impulses and sensations, unpredictable and beyond his control, drained him quickly. Inside his room, however, he was safe. In control. Safe. At least he was supposed to be. The longer he played, the more frustrated he got. His fingers pushed the buttons harder and faster until he practically slammed them into the desk. He hadn't lost once. He ought to be happy. Yet his anger increased with each round he won. No matter what he tried and did, it wasn't working. This was supposed to calm him. It was supposed to distract him from the damn misery his life had become. Why couldn't Kenma just concentrate on his stupid games for once, like he used to? Get lost in them like others did in their work, or alcohol for all he cared. The blonde got more and more agitated by the second until finally his screen darkened, announcing his defeat. The student couldn't do anything but stare, breathing heavily, incapable to process the information on hand. Defeated. Lost. Lost. He had lost. He had lost everything. Kuro. The word was nothing but a quiet, broken whisper. Kenma hadn't even noticed the tears that had started to form in his eyes while he played, and which were now running freely over his cheeks. They left hot tracks on the soft skin and it felt like acid burning into it. Why? Why in hell was he doing this? Why did he even continue to attend classes? What was the point? 
He was just a useless antisocial shut-in. He was too afraid to leave the house without his best friend by his side. But the choice to do so had been taken from him. He had to go. He had to attend these stupid classes in this stupid university alone. Always alone. A noise caught his attention and he didn't need to turn around to know that it was Kuro leaning against the doorframe. He could practically see the sly smirk on his face. Suspicion mixed with a hint of concern well hidden in the warm brown eyes. Could almost hear the teasing words, Hey kitten, lost again? Camarelli loses. And the question he would normally avoid, Is everything alright? That's pretty... unlike you. And under normal circumstances, Gemma would do everything to hide his worries and concerns and most importantly his pain. He would just snuggle up with Kuro and sleep until he felt better. But today, he couldn't help but break. His cries got louder and his whole body was violently shaking with the sobs escaping his throat. Tears stained his clothes and desk, but he couldn't find it in himself to care. All he wanted was for Kuro to hug him, to hold him close against his chest, to kiss the tears away and gently caress his skin, to love him, reassure him and never let go. Yet, when he got closer, go away! He couldn't handle this. None of this. It wasn't fair. Why him? Why did it hurt so bad? He asked himself over and over again, even though he knew the answer that he so desperately tried to forget, ignore and deny. It hurt like hell because he loved him. In all these years since they were children, he learned to love Kuro more than himself. Meanwhile, the cat ignored his outburst and quickly climbed into his lap. It curled itself up into a ball and allowed Kemma to almost crush it in a tight embrace. The blonde held onto the little creature as if his life depended on it. As if it was the real Kuro. But the real Kuro was gone. This cat, which was too similar to his human counterpart for his own good, was all Kemma had left. Goodbye, Coral.